Welcome to the REI Foundation Podcast, where we cover all the steps and strategies to make your real estate dreams a reality. Now your hosts, Jason and Peely. Welcome to the REI Foundation Podcast. Uh, Today with Jason and Peely. Today we have the special privilege of having Justin Williams on with us today. Boom! (laughs) Many of you may not know Justin out there. He has created a process where he flips, I mean, it may even be 200 houses a year, but about 100 houses a year, and he doesn't even see the houses. And if that sounds crazy... I don't believe it. I don't believe it. I I don't believe it. it. Because at this point, though, but he's got a... Uh, a massive flipping process, and he's also now helping others do this process day in and day out with huge, huge success. We know a lot of the individuals ourselves yes. that have gone from flipping one house, no houses, two houses, wholesaling a house to now 50, 60, 70, 80 transactions a year. And it's been uh, quite remarkable. So, well, Justin, we really appreciate you. Welcome to the us. show, Justin. Yeah. Hey, guys. I'm so excited to be here. This is so much fun. <laughs> Aloha, right? Aloha. 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 Yeah, and Justin got just got back from Hawaii. So jealous. Hawaii. Oh, oh so much fun. Talk all about that. So um, fun. Well, to start off, Justin, in regards to real estate, who are you? Who am I? Well, <laughs> it's a deep question. Thought. So I have been uh, in doing real estate full time since 2007, that's when I went to my first um, real estate investing seminar. It's funny, it was all the way in Atlanta, Georgia. I live in California and I didn't know, it's like this little bubble, right? Like I didn't know that people taught this stuff. And as weird as that sounds, I didn't know there was people out there teaching this stuff back then, right? <laughs> so something I was always interested in, I had just kind of barely started to um, get out of a, a failed business. And it wasn't really failed, but I had $120,000 in debt, but kind of climbed out of that, crawled, scratched, fought, got my way out of there. And then we're like, okay, we don't want to do this business anymore. So we got into real estate and went to my first seminar, you know, paid, paid the guy a bunch of money to be in his, his uh, program later on, found out he wasn't really even doing real estate. And um, anyway, it was good though. Like I still, I didn't care. Like I, I was invested. I learned enough, found enough of the right people. I still learned a lot from this guy, as strange it is, it is. My wife and I won a car that we never got from him. So I think that's why I'm a little bitter, right? Like, if you just give me the car, I would have forgiven you for not having done real estate in six That's how years. we got Jess on the show today. He said, Justin, come on our show. We'll give you a free car. Absolutely. Come on down. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it took us seven months before we got our first deal. We were doing short sales at the time. So we actually, we got a bunch of deals like in the pipeline, um, kind of uh, in the first like month or two. But it took a while before they close and some of them don't work out. And then finally after seven months of it's like, okay, I think this works. I'm not totally sure, but I think it can. But we finally got closed our first deal, um, made like $22,000. And the cool thing is the first one took seven months, but the next one was like two months later. And the one after that was like six weeks later. And then a month later, and then there were, there was one time that we did like two in a month and on average we're doing like one a month for a while. And, um, it, it was a lot of fun. Uh, and that's, that's kind of how we got started. Wow. Wow. Like, so like that's, that was the beginning of like Justin's real estate career. Yeah. It's amazing. It's just, uh, you look back and I, uh, and your first step into real estate to where you are today, I, what's some of the big takes, big takeaway for yourself of just you know, your thought process from day one till today. So, I mean, I would like to say that like everything was roses from then on out, um, but it wasn't. You know, in, um, in 2009, we decided to move. Things were going pretty good. We were in Bakersfield at the time, uh, which no offense to anyone in Bakersfield, but I, we had only been there for a couple of years and it was because of our other business took us there. And some people refer to it as the armpit of California. It was, it was hot and, <laughs> and not the best, like, uh, it had a lot of smog and stuff like that. Right. So we just didn't necessarily want to be there. We didn't have any family from there or anything. So uh, we're like, oh, cool! Like we can move, and I always dreamed about living in, in Orange County because I lived in um, Southern California, but I lived in more more inland. And my cousin lived in Orange County. It was just kind of like a dream. I didn't really think it could happen. So we decided to make it happen. We were just running at the time. We moved down to, to Orange County, and, and life was good. And we're like, yeah, this is great. But it was almost like the perfect storm happened because the combination of us moving, and then our industry, uh, the short sale industry, was was changing. There's a lot of different things going on. Um, 
And I don't remember what the other thing was. There was like three things. <laughs> but, but enough things changed to where 2009, like our, our deal flow started to go down. Right. We didn't, we weren't getting deals the same way. We weren't getting as many deals. I was trying to figure some other things out. And in 2010, kind of the same idea. It was just, it just got really tough. Um, in fact, I was just on a call earlier. I think you heard me talk about mm-hmm. uh, my first, I was doing wholesaling all at this time. So my whole goal now was like, okay, I got to learn this, these other ways to do real estate. Um, and I, I started learning about trustee sales and buying houses off the MLS and all that stuff. And I did my very first retail flip and I was scared to death because it was the first time I actually had like skin in the game and something on the line, something I could lose. And I was so scared. And for four months, and this was like the easiest flip in the world, like had granite countertops and like a bare like paying carpet. And, and I was so scared and terrified that what if I lose the money, I lose my partner's, uh, not my partner, but my uh, private money lenders money or something. And because we weren't bringing in as many deals at that time, it's not like I had a lot of cushion. Uh-huh. I mean, we had, uh, we had made decent money up until that point where we were able to move to Orange County and do fun things. And, but we didn't have like a, this big, huge cushion. We hadn't made enough. We paid off some past debts and, and stuff, but we weren't like, you know, had like this major net worth or anything like that. So That's your first one. So I can, ima- I mean, I remember yeah. our first one that was frightening. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was really wild, really crazy. But, um, so that year was a big challenge though. Cause we did that one day we, we, we made like 15,000 we did, we did okay. It kept, kept the bills going for a couple more months. Um, but that year was a struggle. Like we only did a couple of deals. They were small deals. We were transitioning. We were learning new things and it was super hard. And, and that's when I decided that I was going to go into, I was going to do rental properties. I was like, okay, okay. Uh, this flipping stuff is too hard. I'm going to do rental properties and, and it's too scary. And I don't want the risk. And there's this thing called financial freedom. If you get enough rental properties, I've heard about it through different things. <laughs> so I was going to have like 50 rental properties, make a hundred dollars from each one, get $5,000 a month and, and be able to pay my, my expenses. And, and that sounded good, right? Yeah. But what happened is, um, for the next, next four months, I ended up buying 12 rental properties. It was really cool. Cause I learned the rent, how rental properties work and what to look for and how to find cash flow and all this stuff. Um, but once I went to go buy number 13, I was, I was stuck. Cause like I was, I was boom, boom, banging against the wall. Like I was like, no, no, I can do it. I'm, I'm, it's like, I saw him take action, make things happen. But anywhere I looked, I mean, I didn't have all the connections I had at the time. I didn't have all the investors I had. I didn't have any of my own capital. My, my private money line was like, dude, we're like out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, I was like, crap. Like I literally didn't know how to pay the bills the next month because even though we were um, buying houses, we weren't getting an income from them yet. Or if we did, it was like a hundred bucks on a few of them. Yeah. Um, so I had to sell four of those houses. And when I how'd sold four of those, what's that? How'd that feel? It was horrible because <laughs> I wanted to get my 50. Like I had this goal. My mind was set. But out of necessity, I had to sell four of them, the four that weren't yet rented out yet. Mm-hmm. And the money that we made from those four houses made us more money than we would need to pay for an entire year of expenses. Yeah, I mean, they weren't super big houses. They weren't huge profits, but it was like, it, it was plenty for us. And I had this big aha moment, this big light bulb went off. I thought, huh, you know, not only did it allow us to pay for the next year, but it also that money came back right? Like the money from my private money lenders, I can now go out and reuse that again. And I could buy more houses and I could do this again. And I thought, what if I could do that every month? Right. I just sold four houses, which I had never done before. I'd never in a four month period, I had never bought 12 houses. But the reason I was able to do it, because my mind had this, this shift where I was like, oh, I'm buying rental properties. It just makes sense. I'm putting private money on. Okay. But it all made sense to me. It wasn't scary. But then I sold those four and I was like, oh my gosh, like, can I keep buying these? And, and, and I did. And over time we created the, these systems to, to be able to, to systematize and Cause that was by necessity. If I was going to do a high volume, had to have the systems in place. Got a, a JV partner who, who put up half the capital for each one. And this is something else I was talking on the call. And huh. that helped me to feel good about my, the risk I was taking. Cause all of them were rental properties. So it's like, okay, as I'm flipping these houses, as much as I can't make it as much big returns is funny too because I was analyzing the returns and on the rental properties like oh it's six to seven percent and on these properties I was making like 40 50 like 60 annualized percent I'm like <laughs> what? like <laughs> so I was like forget like people talking long term capital I was like whatever like I'm I don't have enough money to keep the business going I'm gonna focus in I'm gonna focus on this one thing sure ideally I buy 
a thousand rental properties that are cash flowing and a hundred houses a year, but I couldn't do that. My, my options were limited. I had to really focus in. I created one system, one focus, and that was buying, um, by, buying systematically buying these properties. And, and that's kind of how, how things happened in 2001, we did 60. This was literally like the year and year and a half before, like we were struggling, like trying to put money on credit cards. My, my wife was pregnant with our third child. Like it was super stressful. I, I felt like for the second time I had kind of failed my family because the first one was a satellite business that ended up with a bunch of debt. And here my wife had trusted me. Like she wasn't typically the entrepreneurial type. Like I was, she was a, a school teacher and, um, I'm just this crazy person who like is totally unemployable. Um, <laughs> you guys laugh, laughing at each other, right? Like, <laughs> that's you guys. But yeah, so uh, it was it was wild. I mean, we went from not knowing how to pay the rent to um, the next year making a good high six figure income. So we had purchased those sixty houses. The next year, made our first seven figure income. Did over a hundred houses, um, and and then the following year, like just continue to create systems until it all became systematized and. Uh, yeah, it's 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 crazy. I almost like even hearing it myself, I almost don't believe it. But it's it's, it's just amazing. Stuck in there, hung in there. I mean, yes. Just to like, it's like looking at you. It gives Jason and I something to look forward to. Like that's yeah. we're sort of in like where we're growing our business. We are. I mean, you're one of our mentors. That's why we have you on our show. Thank you so very much for everything that you've done for us. It's been, I mean, just in the last month that I've taken the leap from, um, if our, actually, before I go into this, tell us more about your, um, coaching program and then I'll go into my story. Okay, sure. So after I systematized my business, um, you know, we, we moved down to San Clemente. It's kind of funny because just a couple of years before, even though we made like a high six figure income one year, we couldn't buy a house. I and mean, we, we, if we would have just taken the cash, we probably could have, but we couldn't buy a house because um, we needed two years of good income and we didn't have one from the year before. So it was kind of wild. Like we, we had to have literally like a seven figure year um, after our high six figure year. It was, it was really interesting. Our, our loan officer, like when he looked at our three years, he's like, what the heck did you guys do? <laughs> what just happened? Hey, what, what's going on here? Is this really, <laughs> not really happening? Um, but, but we moved to San Clemente. My business was, was, pretty systematized to the point to where I only put like a few hours a week into it. And, um, I know we were talking earlier about like a, a blog post I did, um, a while ago where my goal is to buy you know, 150 houses. We didn't quite, quite reach that, but that was the goal I was trying to push myself. And like, people didn't believe that. And that was interesting. Cause that was the first time I had like a bunch of people say like, I'm lying. I'm like, Oh, that's weird. I, I just trying to document what I'm doing here. Right. And I challenged some people and say, you come to my office and I will show you, I said, this is the agreement though. You come, I'll show you every single head. I'll show you every single house. You can go to it. You can see my name on records, whatever you want. And the, but the caveat is you need to go publicly and post that the, this guy is the real deal. He's legit. It's all true. No one took me up on it. But, anyway. well, uh, to, but to interrupt you on that, Jason, that is how Jason found you was on this, this blog post. He saw you, we looked into you and yep. then, and then actually got me on your coaching program as a, as a present for our uh, engagement. That is so cool. <laughs> yeah. Which is a huge lesson to anyone out there, right? Because yeah. I, I shared this with you guys before that was a horrible time in my life, honestly. Like my wife was going through some struggles and I wanted to, to give back to the community. And I'm, look, I'm not, I'm not lying. I believe you give back and I was creating a business as well. I'm a capitalist. I'm not afraid to admit it, but I believe give value. And then people can see, oh, this guy knows what he's talking about. And if it makes sense for them, they maybe some of them would join my coaching programs. That's fine. I didn't mind. I'm going to give value any way I can. Um, but, it, but it was so hard for me because my wife was going through a hard time going through some deep depression type things. And then I'm getting blasted from all these people about like how I'm lying and I'm this and that. I'm like, is this called little pockets or anyway, I probably shouldn't have mentioned that. <laughs> so, <laughs> we might, we might, we might bleep that out. No, you don't need to bleep it out. It's all good. We didn't say the real name. No, but it's, no, no, I, I love that. I love that, um, community for, for, I, I think it's a great community overall. No, it's it's just, awesome community, yeah, yeah. So I'm not. community that we've learned amazing things from. I'm sure you have too. I mean, we refer to that, we refer to it all the time. Which is why I was surprised, um, you know, yeah. But, yeah. but that's the thing. You're going to get the, the naysayers. It's just, yes. it's, and it doesn't matter how big you are. Like you might be a beginner and going into any coaching program and you're going to have somebody saying, Oh, you can't do it that way. 
Yeah. It's probably going to be family, you know, and that's like the first part is there's always going to be, it's about surrounding yourself with the right people. And when you're starting yes. and maybe you're just trying to get into it, whatever business you're in, you want to go out there and sell t-shirts. Well, someone's going to say, oh, I don't know if that's a good idea. I don't know if that's going to be the right thing for you. Yep. And if you keep listening to everybody, you'll do nothing. So yeah. You're right. Really the yeah. biggest thing. You know, to bring it back to you, I mean, that was, I mean, that's how we got in contact with you. And that's awesome. I mean, that's uh, probably how part of your business grew. But back to uh, house flipping formula. Yeah. So, so what happened was, you know, I got to this point where literally like had to put in on average about five hours a week and I'm not trying to go oh, far away. No, like it was four or five, six hours a week, whatever. Right. In my house flipping business is pretty systematized and it's going like, wow, like I've arrived, right? I'm living the dream. I'm here in San Clemente, a mile from the beach and go surfing, paddleboarding, mountain biking. And I, and I did all those things for about a month. And then like, it was the weirdest thing. Like after a while, like I started to feel like kind of depressed, you know? And, um, it, it was just like, oh, wow, this isn't what I thought. I like arrived and, and, and I just wasn't very fulfilled. And I, I knew it, it was just because I wasn't doing a lot that was that important. And one of my mentors, um, he, uh, Russell Brunson, he, he talks about, you come to a point where you know, at first you're creating and then as an entrepreneur, these systems and this business, but then after a while, like that doesn't fulfill the money, doesn't fulfill you anymore. And maybe a little bit, but not completely. It's kind of like a game. It's fun, but you need to, um, you need to be contribution is what matters, right? It begins creating and then it's contribution and whether that's through, um, helping out organizations, which is something that we've really tried to do a lot in the last few years. Um, like, like, Oh, you are that goes in and rescues kids that are, um, that are in like bondage, a sexual bondage, slavery and, and things like that. And, um, I think Jason, you saw what we were able to do with, with, with Bill Allen, um, and, and the children's heart foundation in honor of his son and what he's gone through. And so that's one area of contribution, but then also literally like people like yourself and people in, in my coaching programs, um, and once again, am I a capitalist? Yes. I believe you, if you create it in a certain way that you do profit from it, then you're able to, to, to grow. You cannot grow a business if, if there's not capital ball. That's the, the way that we exchange value, correct? In, in our, in our society. So, but bottom line is I kind of jumped ahead, right? So, but my business was systematized and I knew I had to do more and, and I didn't know what that was going to be at first. Um, but then it, it hit me like, what do I love doing? I loved anytime I go to a family reunion or, or hanging out with friends, like, man, I would be so bored unless like we were talking about like business, entrepreneurship, mindset, like changing your life, growing. Like, if they was talking about stuff, that's just like curtains or like, I don't know. It's like, no. oh, like, I use that as an example, but like, just, I just like get bored. Right. But uh -huh. I love talking about stuff. I love coaching people. Most people didn't want to hear it. Right. Cause you got, like you said, friends and family, like, like, I can't believe you guys, like there's opportunity everywhere. What are you doing? Like, what are you doing? You know, do this? Like, I'm like, I can show you how to do this. And it's the wildest thing. Right. Um, so I thought, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to start coaching people and start teaching. And, and that's when I, I started the podcast. And then six months later, um, started house flipping formula, called it felt fast flipping at the time, rebranded the house flipping formula. And then, um, I, what was it a year after that or something like that? year and a half after that started, um, seven figure flipping, yeah. which is my high end program and then six figure flipping. Anyway. So yeah, I have a few coaching programs. Yes. <laughs> no, there. And they, I've been through house living formula. We were actually, we joined right when you re, uh, rebranded it. I, I oh, awesome. a lot of the stuff had was still, uh, fast forward flipping, I think. Oh um, yeah. Yeah. So yeah. we've been with you for a little bit, no, but we just joined the seven figure flipping and it's just, like just this month, our business probably has like, I would, I want to say like doubled. Isn't that and, crazy? And yeah. we're like, <laughs> I guess uh, right now we're dealing with uh, our business is growing, but our company isn't. Um, I might have just hired an acquisitions manager, but like, we're doing like ebb and flows. It's like, yeah. so, so business grows, but we're trying to catch up with the hiring and then the hiring exceeds the business. And you know, absolutely just keeping yeah. doing those steps right now. And that's the position where I, that, and that's the number one, like the number one thing, like you, you were, I mean, we mentioned Hawaii, like people are like, how in the world do you run two like seven figure businesses go to Hawaii? I mean, it was okay. Like this is going to sound bad, but I, look, my goal is to inspire people. I don't care if 
whatever. I'm not going to hold back because I'm trying to inspire people. Right? When I was in Hawaii for a, make, a week, I made probably around $100,000. Okay. And that was, did I take a call? Or two? Yeah, because I like to, like I, I could. It's just a guy's trip. Like I'm not, I'm like, uh-huh. I, not a lot though. Like I probably worked, which I don't consider work works. I enjoy it. Right. But probably worked about 20 minutes while I was there. Um, made a hundred thousand dollars. Now, okay, how does that happen? It's like every time I go snorkeling or, or scuba diving or to a, a volcano, like I come back or when literally when we dropped, landed off the plane, it's like, Oh, made this much money. Right. It's like another, another 10 grand, 20, like different, different things, whether it was a house closing or, or coaching, whatever it might be. And, um, so I have a lot of people who are like, how do you, how do you do that? How did, how did that happen? And I guess the way I look at it is, um, ah, shoot, you know, this morning I was watching this video with my kids and my son like loves hot dogs, which I know is the healthiest thing, especially after watching this video, like how we were watching how they were made. And it was crazy. Like I watched this machine. It was like, choo, 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 choo. like this hot machine was making 700 hot dogs in, in like a, a minute. Right. And it was like crazy insane. And I thought, huh, how many hot dogs do we eat in America? Like exactly. a year or a day or whatever, like a lot. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I thought, could you imagine if like you're in the hot dog business and you're like literally the person, like you're making the hot dog, right. You're going gathering the scraps or whatever garbage they put in there. And then you're grinding it up. And, and then you're like, like that would be like impossible. It'd take you forever. But yet that is what we do. The typical real estate investor, that is how they run their business. Right. It's, it's not really a business, right? They, they don't run it like a business. They don't create the machine. I call it, if you will, right? They don't create the machine. Now I guarantee you to create that machine that spit out 700 hot dogs per minute. It took some time. It took some effort. And that's what you guys are doing right now, right? You're, you're building that machine, but, and that's what I did. That's what I focused on. And it was like taking a step or two back. So I could then take five, 10, 20 steps forward. Right. And the cool thing about creating a house of machine uh, a real estate investment machine versus a hot dog machine, <laughs> hot dog machine, you got to like finish it before you can use it. Right. Like you can continue to build on that machine and to improve it over time. But I'm a big fan of ROI is all anybody talks about. What is even more important, but is always overlooked is ROTI return on time invested. Yeah. So right now, I mean, I, like this is more of a, I don't, I don't do this exactly all the time perfectly, but I always give myself a, a value. Like what is my hour worth? Okay. And then I think, okay, but I can spend this hour trading time for dollars and literally being the one out there trying to hustle the deals and talk to the contractors. And if you, people get crazy and like literally swing the hammer, that's like beyond my comprehension how people can go there, but mm-hmm. I can be doing all that stuff or I can be creating the system. I can be creating the machine that will then give back to me. And the return, if you, if you really like get geek out on it, and look at the return on your time invested. Like it is insane. Like hiring someone to like um, do a bunch of like the minuscule stuff for you or take calls, like the return that that gives to you. And then compared to what you're worth per hour, like it is like, it's not even comprehensible. You know, we talk about 4% returns, 8% returns, 10% returns. And then like, if you're good at flipping houses, you can make 40, 50% annualized returns. Like this return is like in the thousands annual. It's, just, it's great. Anyway, I'm geeking out. But, <laughs> no, no, you know. no. Please geek out as much as possible. <laughs> this is, I mean, because we are, like you said, we are building our machine. We're, yes. we're trying to build the systems. So we, so, you know, I can go back to Hawaii. I can go home and I don't have to take a phone call. Yeah. You know, we can just go to the beach and not bring our cell phones. Yes. And just be like, you know, we just made $20,000 and we went to the beach. Yeah. And it's, it's, awesome. it's true. It can happen. <laughs> yes, <laughs> it absolutely can. But that's where you have to focus on what, where you focus. That's what will happen. If people don't believe, California, you know, so you're in a market that is deemed a higher end or, or more, more competitive. More industry, yeah. And you're doing it in a market like that, you know, and uh, absolutely. Which, and yeah. Uh, and, but if that's not what you focus on, number one, if you don't believe it can happen, you're not going to focus on making that happen, but that's where your focus is. Um, and that's where my focus is. And, and I, I'm, I'm involved in my education business, but I've also done a similar thing by setting up some coaches that are excellent. Correct. It's not just yep. some of these programs kill me. It's like, they go send you to like this call center, this guy learning from a cubicle. I'm like, no, it's crazy. Anyway. No, I, we've already talked to Andy. We've talked to Bill, like the coaches that you have in your program. They're phenomenal. They're good guys. They're amazing. And they've taken 
like your training, your systems and like use them. And like, for instance, Bill, he went from two to what? 70, 70 you know, 150. Yeah. He's like, oh, and then, yeah. And then he's going to be 150 yeah. With, and, and flying planes. Yeah. And while, yeah. While, while having a full-time job and family, and family. Uh, struggles. Yeah. Correct. Yeah, exactly. Right. So it can be done. Everybody, it can be done. If you're listening to this podcast, it can be done. It's not easy, it's but not just easy. like, just like making a hot dog machine probably wasn't easy. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> <laughs> if you do it, it'll, it'll repay you for the rest of your life. Like if you spend the next, I don't know, it depends on where people are in their situation, right? Like people who come to us who have already failed a bunch of, when I say failed, I mean, they've taken action. They, they've exactly. gone through the school of hard knocks. We're able to get them there a lot sooner. But if you're someone who's, who's brand new to this business or whatever business you, you, you go into, yeah. Is it going to take you two to three years maybe to build your machine? Maybe, but if, people go to school for four or eight years and then they get a, a piece of paper, which don't get me wrong. Like I'm not depending on what you want to do in life. That could be mm-hmm. me and my cousin on the way to, in Hawaii. We have this like, huge debate. I'm like, dude, I'm not like against school. I just think the system needs to be changed. And I don't think everyone should feel guilty if they don't. Anyway, that's a whole nother discussion. Well, it's so funny. Cause as you, as you were talking, I didn't realize you were talking about college. I was like, Oh, maybe he's talking about analysis paralysis. I, I mean, you could think of, like being in like the educational system for so long, it's like having analysis paralysis. It's like stopping you yeah. from actually doing what you do. Yeah, no, it's the same thing. But if, if, here's the deal. Like if I, if I could take like 10 people that were just as qualified to, to get into a college, right? Cause a lot of people that don't go to college, it's like, cause they're not qualified and they're going to go flip hamburgers. Okay. Yeah. That's why the statistics show that people go to college do better. But it's, it's like, cause you're taking a higher caliber of people who are already set up kind of to succeed. Right. But if you were to give me 10 people that for four years are going to go to school and, and do like exactly what they're told or whatever, and, and they would do exactly what I told them to do, like they will be making like high six or seven figure incomes by the time they, they graduate rather than have a whole bunch of debt and trying to find a job. And maybe they changed what they wanted to do and all this stuff. And anyway, so that's my beef with that. Like if someone wants to be in a certain profession, like you got to go to school, that's cool. Right. And yeah, sure. But anyway, that's a total tangent. That was kind of our argument, but my, my, I like tangents. I love my point of that is look like it's not super easy. This isn't a get rich quick thing. It doesn't happen overnight. It kind of bothers me. I see a lot of those gurus out there. They talk about make all this money within 30 days. And I'm like, okay, can it happen? Yeah. But that's kind of the anomaly. Like (laughs) you're not usually going to make like a bunch of money within your first month. That's kind of like where you learn and you fail and you realize what you didn't know. you got to take action as if you're going to make a bunch of money right away. I mean, like, don't be like, Oh, I'm not going to make any money for a couple months. So I'm going to wait. Right. No, you got to take action. You got to fail. You got to learn what you don't know. Um, we, we have this thing called the, the offer club. I mean, like used to like have, have a song about it. Right. And <laughs> like, I, I really respect anyone who has even made an offer in real estate because you've all automatically done what 90% of the people haven't done. And just by doing that, you have to go through like the first like five hard things, right? Which most people never get to like, yep. so you just got to do it. No, I understand. Yeah. I remember for a while there, my mantra was an offer a day and offer, yes. offer a day and offer a day, no matter what it was, just offer yeah. on it, just yep. to get it out there. Cause you yes. know. And we got, and that's, we got a couple of deals that way. Yeah. And that's kind of my thing with this Facebook live. I did or like, it wasn't perfect, but you know what? I said, Hey, I'm going to do one every week for a while. And I'm just going to keep improving as I go. And that's so how anything. About, like talking about Facebook live, um, where can people find you? Like what's the different avenues that people can find you besides house flipping formula, of course. Sure. So house flipping HQ is kind of like the, the hub stands for house flipping headquarters for anyone. Anyway, I said at the beginning, I got to explain that, like what HQ stood for. So that's where you can find, um, like my podcasts are on there. We have a bunch of free, um, blog posts and content there. Um, you can go to house flipping formula for my flagship coaching program, which is like a, 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 a lower and less expensive. It's still like full of great information. Don't get me wrong. Like if you're kind of experienced in, in real estate, but you're not ready to make the, the plunge of the, one of the higher level coaching programs, it's a great place for, for everyone. Whether you're a beginner or whether you have a, a, a decent amount of experience. Um, and then if you're, if you want more one-on-one coaching, like, I mean, you know, to be honest, my time and the mics are my coaches, their time is valuable. So I used to be so afraid of high end coaching because I didn't want to be seen as one of those guys. Right. And 
one day I just had this epiphany because I pay a guy 25 grand and uh-huh. he's helped me a ton in my, in my business, my marketing and whatnot. And I literally would not be in doing this today if it wasn't for him. Right. So I'm like, huh. And I heard him say one time, like he, he'll, he, he serves people in all kinds of ways, but in order for him to be able to serve someone at the highest level, he has to charge a premium for that. So I thought, okay, screw it. I'm not going to worry about all these false beliefs I have about me being taken advantage of in the past. And other people are out there that will get people to like raise their credit card and they don't have any experience in the business. And so I'm like, no, I'm going to do it my way. I'm only going to accept people who are very high caliber. We're going to have the best coaching program in the world, but we're also going to charge an amount that makes it so that we can take the time to give these people what they need and serve them at the highest level. Right. I just knew it wasn't realistic otherwise. Um, so yeah, we started that program and we had, Bunch of people join right off the bat, and it's been it's been incredible ever ever since. So that's called seven figure flipping. Nice. Um, yeah. So yeah, you can go check out those websites, house flipping formula, seven figure flipping.com. And um, you can go to houseflippinghq.com slash coaching if you're unsure of what's best for you and you fill out some information and someone from my team will reach out to you and we'll try to help you out. So right. Okay. And so before we leave you, what what words can you leave us with? Words to live by words to live by. Hmm. I like that. I like that. Hmm. Let me go deep here. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there's so many that you just said that I can like probably repeat them all, but something that's like deep in your heart right now, like, okay, for instance, like what, what is your big why? <sighs> I have lots of thoughts on this too. So <laughs> yeah, it's hard. I'm not, I'm not a very good at like one line. I'm not a good one liner. Right. Well, then um, give us 10. <laughs> yeah, I'll give you 10. So no, my big why, you know, I, I think that typically we always say like our family is our why. And I believe at the essence that yes, that's, that's my why. Right. And I think it's important to recognize that and remember that when you're, you're building your business. Cause I see a lot of people who they say that's their why but then their actions don't necessarily show that. And I get it at the beginning, at the beginning, like you're working hard and sometimes you do got to make sacrifices. It doesn't mean that you're going to be going on vacation every month with your family and, <laughs> and that you're going to like be at every single one of your kids. Thing. I mean, I, I, I get it. You got to put in the sacrifice. Um, but then I sometimes see people who I think they say that's their why, because they really like me, uh, maybe I'm speaking for myself, right? Like I love what I do. I love working. I actually don't wake up to an alarm clock because I naturally wake up early because I love, I love Mondays. I love getting out. It's just, it's just fun to me. So I have had to over past years, learn to slow down a little bit to be at the dinner table and to, um, not be like in the zone of like, what's the next business I can start or the next strategy I can implement and to be present in that moment. Um, so I think, I think that's huge. So obviously not only what is your why, but are you really living your why? And then so kind of related that, but totally different as far as like motivating yourself. Mm -hmm. Right. But that's why you got to keep yourself in check. So what the real why is, is your family. I think we say our family is our why, but I don't know that just taking care of your family is necessarily, this is like a little hack, right? It's not necessarily the one thing that causes people to like really do what they need to do to make it happen. Um, I think there's a lot of other things. Um, for example, my wife has, uh, has a business that she started and it's been, it's not easy. It's been up and down. She's done really well, but it's been not been without days of, of crying and like different moments. Right. Yeah. But, um, she like, everybody knows about it. She started this program and people are in it and there, there's all these different things like Russell, my, my, my coach, he talks about how we, we, we have this thing where we're very, um, Oh, shoot, what's the word? But, but basically, have you ever been in a, a situation where like, the account, of the, the, the pain associated with doing the thing is, might be big, uh-huh. but the pain with not doing the thing is, is greater. Does that make sense? Like, yes. You've got, we, we move towards pleasure and away from pain. So what you've got to do, the hack that you've got to do, and then keep your family in mind, because if uh-huh. you do this well enough, you'll just do it nonstop. You've got to make... The, the pleasure um, associated with the things that you do and the, the pain has to be less than the pain associated with, with not doing it. I get so, it. It's like, it's like you, 
the steps to get where you need to go are really, really difficult. Like for instance, like where we are in our business right now, yes. it's difficult. I have days where I'm just like, uh, I don't know what to do. Justin help. Yes. Um, and then there, but you know that like right there, right there, you know, it's right there. The pleasure of like getting it and being there. It's like and, three feet from gold kind of. Yeah. And so one of the things I don't know you like, like, so seven figure flipping and the coaching programs, for example, I don't like share this a lot just because it's not, I don't know, it just doesn't, it's just not something that comes up a lot, uh-huh. but I'm going to teach you one of the, the, the secrets. Okay. You ready? Oh, right. So not only do people get educated and they're surrounded with people who can, can help them grow and, and they have that direction. Those are all the tangibles. Those are all the things that are very obvious, but a big part of the reason why people in that group are so successful is because they get up in front of people, they share where they were before they share where they're at. They have these high level coaches. Like we love com- com- competing. We love, uh-huh. we don't like to be a quote unquote fail. You know, we, we, it's this like positive peer pressure that just drives you. Like even in the moments when you don't want to do it, like the pain associated with getting in front of her and be like, I didn't do what I said I was going to do. I suck. And I'm just kidding. I, like, no, I, I had one of those moments, I think this morning. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I didn't do it. So I'm sharing yeah. it right now. Totally. And it happens and that's okay. But it's like, it's painful. Right. So it's like, Oh, like it's embarrassing. Like, so anyway, those are some of the kind of the hacks. I know people just talk about you have your why and that's going to drive you. And I'm like, ah, like, yeah, I get it. But like, my family does drive me, but it, but it's more like I need to like be less driven to be with my family, but I need other things are what like drive me. Like it's exciting. It's a game. Anyway, so, I, hope, I hope that didn't. No, that's, that's perfect. I, get it. I think that's huge. I think what you're trying to say is be in the present moment, especially with regards to your family. Yeah. But look forward to like use the drive. Yeah. My kids don't care. My kids just want to run around and then like kick a ball and jump on the trampoline. That's yeah. all they care about. They don't care about what the house we live in. They don't care about the car. They don't care about any of that. They don't care. They want to, right? Play. Like they don't care, but, but I do. Uh-huh. And I'm around other people, but I, I like to like put myself in the situation where I'm going to make it happen. And it makes it fun. Like we have these people in our other um, group that they made a million dollars in in one month. <laughs> now Tara and I are like, we're going to make a million dollars a month. Right? <laughs> so my goal, I've, I've had the goal to make $10 million before uh, in one year before I'm 40, but I will make, and see, see I'm doing it again. I'm causing more pain uh-huh. if I don't make it happen, which is the same reason why I did that blog post um, to football his house is I will make, a hundred dollars in one month before the end of this year, before the end of 2017, like, I just will, because I saw someone else do it. Like I'm telling people I'm going to do it and, and I'm going to do it. I'm going to make it happen. So anyway, <laughs> you heard it here, folks. You heard, <laughs> you heard it here. <laughs> so, and you know what? I believe you, Justin. Yes. It's going to happen. It's happening. <laughs> nice. nice. Like, but that's fun. That has nothing to do with my family. Right. Like, but it's like, it just drives me. It's fun. Like I believe in progressing and sometimes you've got to have like measurable, tangible goals to progress. Right. And every once in a while you got to step back and be like, okay, are these goals, are these things I'm accomplishing? They aren't getting in the way of what's really important to me. I think they're, I think they're kind of two separate things. So. Well, thank you, thank so, you so much. Very much, Justin. Yeah. Oh yeah, my goodness. Thank you. Wow. Wow. Mind blown. Boom. This has been fun. And we are going to hold, we're going to go to Hawaii next year. We're going to make it happen. Yes. That would, yes. Awesome. Yes. Nice. That would get someone off my back who's constantly uh, pushing. So, <laughs> living in New Jersey. So, well, yeah. again, thank, thank you, you so, so much, much, Justin. This is Jason and Peely with the REI Foundation podcast. And thank you so much for listening. So grateful. Have thank a- you guys. Thanks for tuning into the REI Foundation Podcast. Check back next time for more awesome tips and strategies to launch your new you in real estate.